Hello and welcome to the Meet Medic podcast. Today I am joined by my special guest, Dr. Adure Osuji. Uh, I hope I said that right. We've tried a few times now. <laughs> uh, we've had a few difficulties getting this getting this sorted, so hopefully this all works out okay now. Um, Osuji is a uh, sorry, a, 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 Adore is a GP and health coach. Recently moved here to Australia, and she wants to come here and share her journey and uh, how she helps her patients. So, Adore, if you want to give us your your story, your background. Okay, so hi, Suresh. Thank you for having me on here. Welcome. So, um, I am a GP. I was trained in the UK. I arrived here in December 2018. Um, and I started working in January 2019. So um, I've, you know, I've experienced some um, GP work in Australia before lockdown. And then obviously things started happening there. During the last two years, I kind of decided that I prefer to mainly focus on um, dealing with chronic illness with my patients, you know, one on one, giving them enough time to actually understand their illness and understand how they can actually take control of their health with decisions, day-to-day -day decisions about what they eat and how they are and how they live. So, you know, I decided to just take a side step, you know, go on and do the health coaching um, part of it instead of the GP, because I want to come away from all the prescribing and the blood tests and everything. I mean, patients can keep their GPs, you know, I don't want to take over from their GPs. I just want to focus on, you know, their lifestyle and diet properly. Mm. I think that is the basis of most of the chronic illnesses that I used to see um, every day, day in, day out as a GP. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's fascinating because uh, that's not a super common story that you hear, you know, doctors uh, wanting to um, not not de-specialize in a way, but <laughs> but change change tact into more more health coaching. Um, what made you make that decision? um yeah uh, what was what was your journey into that decision because that's quite a big decision to make yes um as a foreign trained gp um when you come to australia there is this thing called the moratorium where for the first 10 years after you move here you have a couple of choices you can either go and work in an area of need you know so that's usually rural areas you know very low population areas like that and you have to you know you can stay there for as long as you want if you do that um i didn't want to do that so i wanted to stay somewhere in like a city but if you stay in a city then there are some restrictions for example you have to change clinics every six months or you have to agree to teach medical students and in that way because you have a contract with the university whether it's a one-year two-year contract you can stay for as long as that contract lasts and of course you can renew it as long as they have students for you to teach that's fine so i did that a bit just before lockdown but i decided i didn't want to do that either so um it was either you know don't move somewhere else or try to you know figure something out also i'd you know struggled for a while with my work as a gp because you know having to work as i was because i can't start my own gp practice because of the moratorium because i'll have to move my my business address every six months and things like that so it's a bit difficult yeah and i always found that for you know where i worked whether it's a bulk billing practice mixed billing practice a lot of the patients are chronic chronically ill patients you know and it almost seems like it doesn't really matter what we're doing. People are coming back with uh, blood tests either not getting better or getting worse. And as someone who's always, always been focused on diet for my personal um, health, I could see that there are there's something that we're not really talking about here. Now, I used to talk about it. So, you know, I would spend my 10 minutes and go over my 10 minutes trying to explain to them, you know, what you eat does have a very, very big impact on how you feel on a day to day basis, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But again, with the GP construct, people come in and because I'm new, I don't have like my patients for years and years. I have new patients that have just moved in or I have just moved to the practice. So they're all new. They already have their um, established routines with the GP. So they come in and they just want their prescription. And I've never been, you know, easy like that, where someone just says to me, I want my prescription and I just sign it. I have to ask a bit more questions about, oh, so why are you on this medication? Like, how long have you been on this medication? And sometimes you can just see that the, there's just a glaze. They just glaze mm -hmm. over. 
you know, they don't want to answer. They, this is not what they came for. You know, just give me my meds and I'll go, you know. So it became very unsatisfying for me. So I, I thought, you know what, let me actually try to give this uh, a proper, you know, focus. Mm. And, you know, I have, I do have the medical knowledge, but this is what I want to focus on. And I think it is the basis of most of the illnesses that we see, basically our diet. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, for my viewers and listeners out there who aren't sure what on earth we're talking about with the moratorium, uh, it, it's basically, it's a, when you come to Australia as a foreign trained graduate, uh, like myself, I'm also subject to this moratorium. Mm. Um, I came over 20, uh, 2018 pretty much same time as you uh january january 1st we were on the flight oh. over, over new year's eve we had we had champagne on <laughs> champagne <laughs> on the flight midair uh, with our with our you know two two kids uh now three kids um mm -hmm. and uh you you can't work in a in you know just wherever you want you know you've, you've got to work in a workforce shortage area now mm -hmm. here in australia there's a big um you know split where the population lies uh, as you of course know and uh, most of the population is in is in the cities and there's a lot of competition you can't just go and work in the city if you're subject to this 10-year moratorium um, and it's for 10 years now you can move into rural and you can get some time down on that uh, if you're wanting to but and the more rural you go uh the the, uh, the more time you get off that moratorium potentially 50 percent time off which is yeah. Yeah. significant yeah. And then you are extremely remote and rural. Uh, now, rural general practice, we can talk a little bit about that and the crisis there, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but what we refer to there, so we can you can have exemptions to this rule. Yeah. And that's if you are like a, tied to a university, you're teaching students, you know, university students and so forth, uh, or which requires a big commitment. You can't just, yeah, fine, I'll just teach some for a day and then I'm fine. Yeah. No, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, or you have to keep changing your own uh, where, where you're working, which, of course, is incredibly disruptive for the doctor, for the patients. You clearly can't start your own clinic and keep moving every six months and so on. Yep. Um, that also doesn't really work either. Um, so I guess you you were subject to this moratorium and you decided yeah. that, I guess, well, I don't want to be anymore. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of working in this way. Um, you know, seeing patients for, for 10 minutes, uh, I mean, very similar story to mine. I, I, you know, most doctors don't want to work like this. That is true. Yeah. I, I think that's pressure. Yeah. yeah. You don't get much time with your patients. And I do understand how doctors just become this kind of, you know, what do you want? I'll just give it to you. Off you go. What's the next patient and what's the next patient? But that's incredibly unfulfilling. We have doctors burning out. It's unsustainable. Um, so, you know, something has to change. And I thought, you know, I can't wait for something to change. I, I have to do what I can, you know, on my own first and then see what happens. Absolutely. I mean, 10 years is a very, very long time yes, um, to, be, to be subject to this rule. Um, and, and definitely, again, for me, that type of medicine was, is extremely unfulfilling. Um, it's fine for a while, but you start to realize you're really not actually helping anyone. And you certainly can't make much of an impact. So I guess you wanted to do to do more. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned, of course, that this resonated with your own health journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, maybe you can give us a bit of an idea about your personal health journey and how that impacted then these decisions that you've made. Okay. So um, I think from quite a young age, so my late teens, I kind of, it's like my body became a barometer, very sensitive, and it would tell me immediately when I ate something, if it didn't like it or not. And um, that's the first time I started realizing actually what we do eat has a direct effect. And I, I kind of, you know, it's frustrating sometimes because like, I just don't, I just want to eat this. I just want to eat that. But in a way, it means that, you know, I'm acutely aware of what I'm doing. So I, I can stop the hurt. I can stop you know, causing damage to myself. And I can see that a lot of patients, because they don't have that quick, you know, do something and get a response kind of thing, they don't make the connection for years and years. They don't make the connection that this, that what they're doing is actually hurting them. So for me, you know, it started with, you know, um, period pains, menstrual cramps, knowing that if I had something, a drink or something with a bit of sugar in it, like within 15, 20 minutes, I'm like, you know, cramped up with pain okay. and I, I still remember the first day it happened it was so acute because I was having pain anyway and um, 
I had like ginger tea made for me and it was just supposed to be ginger tea. So I drank it and I thought, oh, this is a bit sweet, but didn't matter. I drank it anyway because it was nice. And then within 20 minutes, the pain had shot up from like a six to about a nine and a half. I was absolutely. Wow. And then we were, we were like, why, what has happened? So we went and got the packet of the ginger tea and it basically, the first four ingredients were different kinds of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> And then ginger was just like a little bit of, a <laughs> little, bit of <laughs> little tiny bit there. Just there's yeah. a bit of ginger in there somewhere in the midst of the sugar. Yeah. So that was the first day I realized like how acute it was within 20 minutes. Mm. And so since then I've been able to kind of, when something is not going right with me health wise, I'm think, I think like, what, what is it that I can do? I start to, you know, keep a kind of symptom diary to try and figure out things. And I always track it down. I always track it down. But mm. because, you know, I, I, you know, I used to refer to myself as a foodie. I like to eat all different things. So it wouldn't really stick. So I'll do it a bit and then it kind of fall off again and do mm. a bit and try and fall off again. And it, at the same time, I obviously went to med school, then went, um, started GP training. And I would always remember this patient. I think he actually changed the course of my career because it was like my first GP placement. So just one year into GP specialism. And he came in for, because in the UK we do, um, you know, the, when you're 40 years old, between 40 and 45, you have to do like a, a test where you check every, all your um, health parameters to see if there's anything we should be keeping an eye on. So he came to have his results to discuss his results with me. And I was, and I looked through and everything was perfect. Apart from his LDL cholesterol, everything was perfect. So I just waited for him to, <laughs> I waited for him to come in, and this guy came in in full lycra with his cycling gear. He was so fit, so healthy looking. Okay. Obviously exercising a lot, right? Yeah. And he sat in front of me, and I had to tell him his blood results. I'm like, oh yeah, it's great, everything's fine. But because there was that red bit, I couldn't skip it, right? Mm. So I had I had to mention I had to mention it, and he, when I said that, he was like, "Really? But, but I don't eat any anything." I was like, "Okay, so tell me a bit about what you eat." And he literally, if you could have printed out, you know, the food pyramid or whatever, he was right there. You know, mm. you can superimpose it on his face, perfectly following the rules. So yeah. I couldn't I. I, I heard myself start to sh say the spiel, you know, you should, you know, cut down on your red meat and then you should cut down on this. Mm. But he was, I don't, I don't eat that. I don't, I don't do that. So I, I literally couldn't give him any advice. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Never mind. Everything else is fine. Let's not worry about it. We'll do it again in a year anyway. And then we'll see how you go. And he looked so confused. Like he was going to ask another question, but mm. he didn't, you know, this guy was you know, basically vegetarian. Like he would eat fish maybe once or twice a week. That was it. Barely touched any red meat. So as he left the room, I just thought that's odd. Like that doesn't make any sense at all. Mm. Basically that was the start of the rabbit hole. So I, I yep. decided I'm going to look, I decided I'm going to look into it. Can you, can it be that the diet doesn't have anything to do with cholesterol or, and yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. So I basically, we'll get up to that, yeah. yeah. So I basically um, found um, Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis. I don't know if you heard about I, that. I've this heard was about, it. haven't read it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, this was in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and he, um, I, I read it and I thought, you know what? That's the wheat gone. And um, I decided to try it for about, you know, just to try it. Within three weeks, I dropped so much so weight. Yourself? I did. I yeah. tried it myself. Okay. Um, because I, I couldn't start telling people because I, I didn't know. I was just going to try it. It's literally just yeah. don't eat this. It, it's not mm. a big deal. But I dropped so much weight. And, mm. you know, I wasn't, you know, very overweight, but I was towards the end of the, you know, my BMI range. So I... You know, I became slap, slap back in the center within a month. And I thought, excellent. Well, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have any particular health problems at the time, there was nothing else I was looking at apart from weight. You know, I my my energy was better. I slept better. I mean, I had so much energy. It was ridiculous. Mm. It was inconvenient. I'm like, I want to go cycling and it's like 10 p.m. What is this? Um, so, you know, I, I kept it. I kept it going for a, for a bit. Mm. Um, and then one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to have a bit of a, uh, a biscuit 
<laughs> I'm going to have a biscuit and it's going to be fine. And obviously, if, you, if you're going to cheat on your, this lovely diet that you're on, you're going to go for the best thing ever, right? So I went for the McVitie's digestive biscuit, mm-hmm. which I used to absolutely adore. Chocolate cookie. And um, no, it was just plain. Actually, I should have just done the chocolate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I um I ate that a couple of just a couple of um, biscuits after dinner, and then I went to bed. I woke up the next morning screaming. I literally screamed. That's what woke me up. Yeah. Gosh. And I woke up and I was like, what was that? What was that? And it took me a few seconds to realize it was acid. I had acid reflux. Uh-huh. And that was the same sensation that I had lived with for most of my life. Mm-hmm. I had always woken up with this indigestion, but it was so normal to me before that I'll wake up. I used to think, oh, I can't lie in. I could never lie in because mm-hmm. when I wake up, I'm already hungry. So I have to go brush my teeth, eat something, and then mm-hmm. you're awake. So you can't go back to bed. But it had been indigestion this whole time. Mm-hmm. And for the three months that I'd been doing this wee belly thing, I hadn't realized that it wasn't there anymore right. until, until I ate the biscuits and then it came Can back it with a vent. Came back. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good so, story. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I realized, oh, it's not just weight then. It's indigestion as well. Light bulb. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. So it's a little bit of thing. So I then started telling my patients who came in with indigestion or were struggling with their weight, have you tried, you know, gluten free for a while and see how you go? And they'll come, they'll come back. Some of them would say, oh, I kind of fell off. But you know what, though? I remember a lady said, said to me, yeah, I kind of fell off that. But for the few weeks that I was having it, obviously my son had to be wheat free as well because I was the one doing the cooking. And there was, there'd been this rash on his, his arm for years. Mm. that no one knew what it was about and in the two weeks we weren't eating weed it disappeared ah, and interesting. there's an like it's just random things that i wasn't expecting yeah. people to say they mm. started saying so i started looking more into it and then i then yeah. decided to adopt the paleo diet that, that was amazing it and then it's like just up and down because there was a bit too much cooking and too much salads on the paleo. Mm. So I fell off that wagon. And then for some reason, I kind of came off the whole thing and decided to go back on the balanced diet. Balanced. Um, Everything in moderation. Yes, exactly. Um, And then at one point I even, I did the vegan thing. I think I had done vegan before actually. Okay. Um, One year, I think I was second year out of med school. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to say, you know, this diet. So if, if you if they keep saying that you just need to keep your red meat to the minimum, that means the the more minimum it is, the better, right? The so why don't it you is. Take, yep. Exactly. Take it out. So why don't yeah, you just take it out? Yeah. I took it all out and I did it like horrendous meals because I was just eating my normal stuff, but just veganizing them. Oh, okay. and it was just gross. <laughs> it was just <laughs> gross. But I I hung on. I hung on, and I think. Yeah. Two weeks in, I was in my practice, in my room, lunchtime, eating another one of those meals. And suddenly the room just started spinning, Mm. spinning. I thought I was literally standing on my head. It was that bad. I had to leave, try, get, I got to GP practice somehow, um, got like some stematil and some, you know, so anti-sickness and went home. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in bed for nine days with the dizziness. Wow. Okay. I had, um, I had, my next placement was ENT, so it's ear, nose, and throat, and they deal with dizziness. And I told mm. my consultant about it, and he's like, get in the MRI machine, let's see what, if there's anything horrendous going on. It was perfectly fine. Mm, okay, well, that's good. So, so they couldn't explain why I was so dizzy. So once I got better, I thought, well, you know, when I was dizzy, I couldn't cook for myself and my flatmates couldn't be doing my vegan meals for me. So they just gave me whatever. And I got takeaways, which were non-vegan. So I got better. But then when I got better, I thought I need to get back on the vegan diet. Right. Yes. Yes. This time, well, because this it, time, couldn't, it couldn't possibly be. It couldn't vegan. have been. It couldn't that, have been. That, it couldn't, couldn't have been, been that. Okay. Because <laughs> that is the perfect healthy diet. Of course. So two days later, two days later, I got in my car, yeah. drove to work, got out of the car stood up and then the world spun again and i thought okay oh okay okay maybe we'll not do this anymore yeah and 
yeah, I, I think I'm a smart person, but I still tried it a couple of times after yeah. over the, the next 10 years because I could not. I needed to do the experiment as perfectly as possible yeah. before I could say it didn't work. So I did sure, more. Yeah. yeah. So I did more greens, more green mm-hmm. juices that didn't work. So I did more um, cooked foods that didn't work. I did more lentils, yeah. more beans that didn't work. Mm. You know, at one point I even added just eggs, Every, everything else vegan, but add eggs. Yeah. Still, that didn't work. Yeah. Because the most important thing was missing. Which, which was meat. Which was basically animal fat. Yeah. Meat and fat. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, so you've done vegan. You've done yeah. paleo. Uh, yeah. Where are you at now with your diet then? Because you said you've fallen off a few times. You've done a few different diets and so on. Yeah. Now, where where yeah. are you at now with the diet then? What are you eating at the moment? Okay, so around um, mid last year, like my weights had just kept going up and up, and the, I felt out of control. I could, I didn't know. Every time I st- stood on the scale, I didn't know what it was going to be doing. So I had no control of it. And I have a very strong family history of type two diabetes, and I know the correlation, of course. Mm. So I needed to get it under control. And I thought to myself, I know the only thing that has worked before. And that was when I was paleo. So very low, basically low carb. It wasn't even very low carb because you could eat tubers and things on paleo. Um, So it wasn't extremely low carb, but it had worked like a charm. Mm. And I had acknowledged to myself that I was a carb addict. Mm. You know, I was the kind of person where I couldn't eat one cookie. Mm. so i can stay i can stay away from (laughs) i can stay away from the cookies i don't have to eat them but if i get a pack of cookies it's it's inhaled it's oh yeah (laughs) it's inhaled oh yeah and it's gone like suddenly i look at people who take a bite of a cookie and put it beside their tea and then continue a conversation and i'm like no (laughs) oh yeah do you do that yeah so i know that so i started thinking to myself maybe i should do some intermittent fasting because that will help before i've done okay. intermittent fasting in the past yeah didn't lose any weight at all oh that's interesting yeah I mean, that just didn't really work for you nope i think that time i was a bit veg vegetarian but not vegan at all mm. but also i tried it when i was just a balanced no nothing Mm. nothing um i've also tried 36 hour fast like on and off so 36 hours on days up hours off for like three weeks or a month mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. zero weight loss mm. so it's like my body just freaks out every time it doesn't get like proper food mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. Okay. and it just holds on yeah so i decided mid last year you know what let's go back on low carb let's try let's see again mm. you know you know what works so i went back on it and i decided you know i would i could i kind of understood what had gone wrong with paleo there was too much cooking and i don't like to cook if i have to keep trying to plan things i'm gonna fall off the wagon again so i said just focus yeah yeah, just focus on the just focus on the meat get full um and then see how you go Mm -hmm. um and oh my god (laughs) shuresh within a month i love i lost like eight kilos like just wow Wow, a month. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's like a month, a month and a half, but it was just wow. all the way down. And I just thought, oh, okay. So I knew, I kind of knew that would happen, but I thought it wouldn't because, you know, I'm not in my mid 20s anymore, in my late 20s. So my yeah. metabolism and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But it happened again. So I started to think, you know, I don't want just a big weight loss thing. I want something that's sustainable. So I said mm. to myself, if you cut out too many carbs, then you start to f- miss them and then you put them back in like you did before and then everything gets, you know, undone. So what I started to do was like started experimenting basically mm. with my body. I said, you know what, I'll keep it very low carb during the week and I'll have, if I'm thinking about any particular carby meal that I want, I will have one, I'll have it in the weekend, mm. just one meal on a Saturday, on a Sunday. So just mm-hmm. get it out of my mind. I'm not going to, you know, mm. I'm not going to think too much about it. Um, I thought I would be sad, mm-hmm. you know, that I couldn't have my cookies and things anymore. Yeah. But once I started to feel well, I mean, my energy went back up, my sleep. Sometimes I sleep like a, it's like I'm dead. It's like it's so deep, such deep sleep mm. and such rejuvenating sleep. When I wake up, it's like I took a pill or something. Mm. But the minute I get up, the minute I'm out of bed, my, I'm wide awake. Mm. 
wider work. And so were you, were you, with, Amazing. With, was this with low carb or was this keto? This is, or? This is so this was like low carb. Okay. Um, I was having, I tried to get a bit of raw milk. You can't really get that here in Australia, but I mm. found something like that cold mm. pressed raw milk, which is yeah. the same, but, and then I tried it with goat milk as well. Mm. Um, I was it like made by cow or something made by cow exactly yeah. I think they're the only ones that do it yeah pretty I much did, yeah I, I cold, cold press cold yeah. press milk yeah it's very yeah. very nice bit expensive but yes 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 very nice. yeah <laughs> um I eventually decided to stop with the the cow's milk mm -hmm. um the only thing dairy I have now is the full fat Greek yogurt mm. it's perfect it's nice and fatty and doesn't give me any sort of negative um effects at all okay so um so yeah for the last six seven months i've been mostly carnivore sometimes i'll have that meal if i wanted to mm. eat meal um i always feel satisfied i always feel energetic sometimes mm. it's a bad thing like if you're in a boring lecture you can't even fall asleep because you're so like awake <laughs> um <laughs> So it's like yep. I have so much energy. Yeah. I literally have no problems with it. And the the what I find with patients is that when you try to tell them about how amazing this is, the only thing they're hearing is that they're currently unwell and the only thing that gives them joy is the food that they're eating. Okay. Mm. So when you then try to tell them not to eat those foods or to try and see if there's anything else that they can eat, what they see in their future is still the illness because that's what is reality for them at the moment mm. but then now the illness without the nice food to make them feel better that is a really good point and to be honest i'm not sure i've ever even contemplated that actually and that makes me a bit sad to admit that um that is a that is a really good point that yeah i guess if you are ill but you're eating yes. food that you perceive to be nice yeah at least that's that's something you you take that away mm -hmm. they still have the illness and yes yeah, You've taken away the thing that's actually nice to nice for them exactly exactly I, i'd actually never thought of that that is that is pretty powerful thinking actually yeah that's where a lot of the resistance comes from right. because they're like then what do yeah. i have mm, that makes so, sense well as a health coach i mean as a gp you don't have time to go into this it's just like okay well mm. you know here's your pills off you go but as a health coach this is what we talk about this is what we go into mm. that if you you give this a chance you will feel so much better that you won't imagine you won't be able to imagine giving yourself so much pain by what you used to do before mm. but you have to give yourself a chance yeah. and that is where the coaching comes in absolutely so how long have you been coaching for now then I just started a couple of months ago. So um, that's, I just um, kicked it off a couple of months ago. So not very long at all. Mm. But, you, you know, people in my life, I've been hearing about it for a long time. <laughs> so, so you've been doing Carnival now for, you said about seven, seven and a half months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's obviously since, since you came to Australia. So you weren't talking to it, you know, to patients in England about it. No. Um, but were you talking, were you talking to patients in general practice about this here in Australia? And what was what was their reception to it? Well, I wasn't because I um I did talk about it with patients in in the UK. I did, but it was a it was a very dicey thing because when I discovered low carb, I also um, heard about Dr. Tim Noakes who was being persecuted for giving low carb advice. Mm -hmm. I remember like listening to all thirty five hours of his testimony in that uh, court case because I was so fascinated. What are they going to do with this man? Are they going to are they going to find a way to prove that he was wrong or something? But they didn't. They had nothing on him. Mm. So, but still, still they had people, you know, very wary. Even doctor, there's another doctor here that was you know persecuted as well for the same thing. So I wasn't happy to start, especially being new in australia i don't know where i stand as mm. a gp saying these things this is another reason why i would like to be a health i, I wanted to be a health coach instead it's a bit more you know i have my own um um basically protocols that i'm you know talking to patients about and there isn't this draconian overseeing patients do have the choice whether they mm. want to do it or not you know i'm not forcing them and i always say you know I'm not your GP. If you want, you go and talk to your GP and you want to do what they say, that's perfectly fine. But if you're coming to me, this is what we're going to be talking about. 
that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a really, really important. I uh, hear the case was uh, Dr. Gary Fetke. Uh, yes. Yeah. Or, or orthopedic surgeon. For anyone that doesn't know, it's definitely worth checking out uh, mm -hmm. his his story, uh, him and his wife, uh, Belinda Fetke, I think it is. So, so Gary was a, an orthopedic surgeon, I think still is, not sure if still practicing or not. Um, but, uh, he was giving patients, uh, low carb advice to try and lose weight. So they actually didn't really need these surgeries anymore. Um, and I believe, and I forgive me if I get it slightly wrong, um, dietetics Australia basically found out and, and went after him, reported him to APRA, our medical register, uh, medical board, and basically said he's giving, you know, dietary advice. Dangerous. Yeah. He's dangerous advice. You know, he's not allowed to do this. And APRA, I think, were pretty quick to investigate and suspend him for about two, two and a half years. Yeah. Um, I mean, completely ruining his his career, basically, mm -hmm. um, because he was trying to help patients, trying to help people get fit, lose weight, yeah. so on. With with um, information yeah. that's actually available. Like yeah. there is and, and proven. research there. Yeah. And proven. Proven yeah. to be yeah. safe, proven to yeah. be effective for, yeah. for uh, numerous conditions. Yes. Um, and then and basically APRA suspended him for two, two and a half years. And then only recently, I think, actually reinstated him under, you know, quite a lot of pressure. I think, you know, his him and his wife got a you know got a big following around this, put a yeah, lot of pressure. Definitely. Uh and then media retention. And of course, then it was, you know, APRA didn't have a choice but to then say, well, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no case here. I mean, thankfully, since then. That actually paved the way for other doctors here in Australia to be able to talk about diet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's crazy. Like even as a GP, like we do dietary advice day in, day out. Like every single patient almost, we talk yeah. about diet. Yeah. yeah. We we're not actually technically allowed to. Yeah. Like it's You're insane. Saying. It's like we're told <laughs> that diet is in like every single guideline, yet we're we're, yeah. we're not allowed to talk about diet. It's ridiculous. But what diet? Yeah. But it's like, yeah, yeah diet is, but like what yeah. diet? You know, exactly. so we we would you know you you say a patient now has this diagnosis now they have to go to the dietitian so you send them off to the dietitian what is the dietitian telling them you yeah. don't know exactly. but the patient keeps coming back oh they're not getting any better and we yeah. just assume they're not doing what the dietitian told them to do absolutely absolutely um so we were talking about Gary Fetke and Anapra so I mean thankfully this this now really paved the way for uh, for all doctors to kind of talk about this now which is which is. Mm -hmm amazing um so uh you weren't really talking about it that much with your gp patients because you were basically scared yeah yeah i wasn't sure what, yeah. what basis or, or what you know stand i would have if someone says to me, oh you know someone reports me and said oh she told me to eat you know low carb mm. you know would i get in trouble for that i didn't know because yeah. you know, i'm new here so i don't really mm. know what this is and it doesn't seem like many other people are doing it so i'll just be the one the only that's, one doing it really that's right i mean it, it's a very real thing that we have to worry about here i mean in australia i think you know mm -hmm. uk you mentioned of course uh, gary yeah. uh, tim noakes there there's other people mm -hmm. like gary torbs and so on mm -hmm. you know america there's people that have got in trouble for doing this as well mm -hmm. um and it, it's crazy as doctors you know we've we've got to be very very careful and scared about uh you know saying the wrong thing when when we're just trying to help patients you know, the best way we know how and these things are proven you know it's not like we're just making things up you know they're proven you know long histories of like you know like epilepsy treating it with low carb ketogenic yeah, diets yeah, you know, type yeah. one type two diabetes there's mm -hmm. huge amounts of evidence yet they weren't in the guidelines you know and then you yeah. you, you do it and, and then you're you're told no sorry you're actually unsafe and you're dangerous like hundreds of years worth of evidence and no sorry yeah. it's dangerous now like, it's just crazy yeah. So, um, um, I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just no. I was going to clarify that um, Dr. Tim Nook is actually South African. Right, so that right, okay, all happened sorry, yep. in South Africa. No, it's fine. But you're, you're very right. It's like you're doing something, even if the patients are like, oh, no, I feel great now. Hmm. It's like if somebody declares that you are dangerous, um, then, you know, your career is suspended and just mm -hmm. left in abeyance for however long until they decide oh okay you're fine and then carry on yeah um and it's extremely disruptive it's devastating to people mm -hmm. you know um and i just didn't want you know any of that really yeah. so um, i just stayed absolutely. clear of it really yeah absolutely so so you're health coaching now and mm -hmm. you uh do you find people coming to you for you know, kind of general health advice or more specifically for carnivore or specifically for diet or for weight loss? What, what do people come to you with? 
Well, I haven't had that many now to be um, to be able to call it, or it's mainly this or mainly that. But it is it's a chronic illness, you know. So chronic illnesses where they're already on all these medications, they want to know how, like, what can they do? What can they do next? Just to have a different opinion, really. Um, and I think that's that's where actually my passion lies, getting people off their medications if they mm. can get off their medication so yeah that is that is what i'm mostly focusing on yeah yeah no absolutely because, yeah and and do you find people take that advice do you find <laughs> maybe maybe not do you think do you think they they take it on board that they listen um, and then implement those strategies or still they just they just don't i think i have people who who listen and they're glad to hear something different from what they've been hearing. And they're happy to hear that you need a bit more meat. That's always what they, they hear first. Mm. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them, uh, people come to me and they say, well, I couldn't do it all properly, but I'm eating more meat and I'm actually yeah. feeling better. I'm yeah. getting more energy. You know, I'm not feeling as tired. So that is, that is a positive thing. So I'm not trying to be draconian. I'm not really trying to get anyone to be carnivore. I mean, all my friends and stuff, they think I'm trying to do that. But I, <laughs> I'm quite happy. What I want to do, and I would say this, I, it's, I want to just stand on a roof with a megaphone, mm. you know, saying like red meat is not bad for you. Animal yeah. fat is amazing for your brain and for your yeah. general well-being. OK, you need to be eating this. I literally need just everyone to know about this and then I can go and relax. I maybe can even find something else to do with my, my life. Yes. yes. But it's like I have this passion because once I realized that a lot of illnesses that we are seeing in modern medicine is created by the food we eat and our mm. lifestyle. For me, GP became like just busy work. Right. It's like we're starting fires and then rushing around trying to put out just the fires like just stop band-aids yes just starting fires <laughs> yes exactly just stop yeah. that yeah and when there's people there's so many patients so just distressed and lost you know about what to do mm. um i do i also do um medicinal cannabis prescribing at the moment oh yes okay. and i find that again it's i do with a different company but I find that a lot of the patients that are coming for that are also chronic illness. Yes. And a lot of what they have are the kind of things that, you know, I deal with, with low carb. Yeah. But I, I find I can't tell them that because it's not my, I can't be, you know, you know yeah. advertising my being yes. in, in another person's company. So it's, again, that's really frustrating to me. So I'm just trying to just focus mm -hmm. on the low carb because I need to get people as far as, as, as however I can yeah. on board with this to whatever extent because you know like you know with the low carb thing there is a range you know mm. you start from paleo you go all the way to the lion diet mm. right mm. so you know paleo is um no grains no legumes no dairy okay while the lion diet is beef salt and water right there's a whole range in between correct people can find where fits them the most okay mm. And my job is to try and help people figure out where they're going to be sitting there. Yeah. But I think the most important thing is that I need people to know that food is not benign. Mm. You know, um, it's not a neutral thing that you can just put in your mouth. And, you know, if you close your eyes, then your body doesn't realize you put it in there. Yes. It's always going to realize it and it will react to it. Yes. Whether today or in five years time, it will show up. Mm. You, it can't, you can't hide. If you're putting your mat, it's going to show up somehow. Yeah. I'm, I actually think some, somehow putting weight on is a protective mechanism for some people because, right. the, you know, it's like almost like the fatter they get, the less it's in there doing the, you know, horrible stuff. But a lot of people who remain slim for longer. Maybe, yeah. Um, they, they tend to eat more of the bad stuff because they think, mm. it, you know, I'm slim, so nothing's, nothing bad's happening to me. You get a lot of people who it's become insulin resistant, insulin resistant that way and very badly insulin resistant. So they yeah. don't, they don't recover very well, even when you try to start and yeah. sort it out because mm. it's just been that long. 
that they have been in insulin resistance without knowing. But yeah. if you're putting weight on, you're aware something's going wrong, then you're starting to try and do some, put some mm. measures in to help yourself. Yeah. That's what, that's what I. Do you, do you find a lot of people are insulin resistant? Um, do, you, do you do blood tests as part of your? No, 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 no. So I'm, protocols? yeah, no, so I'm, yeah. So I'm a, like a, a health coach, like a health coach can be someone who was in business before yeah. and then decided to go and do a kind yeah. of coaching course. And then the only okay. difference is that I am an actual doctor, but yes. I'm not going to be doing like the GP work. So referrals or Fair blood enough. tests and things like that. Yeah. I'm not doing any of that. So mm. I'm working as a health coach. I just have the medical background as well. Yeah. Um. So um what was your question sorry do i i was asking about insulin resistance whether you find that a lot of people are resistant i guess if you're not doing the blood test maybe you don't yeah and most people most know people, i know i wasn't doing i wasn't doing fasting insulins mm. you you it has to be a private test you don't just add that on with your hba1c yeah. and your fasting glucose it is something extra and usually the patient has to pay for it mm. so most doctors have to have a justification for yeah. ordering that that blood test mm. so a lot of the times we don't actually know if people are insulin resistant. Yeah. We just look at yeah. the HbA1c, which yeah. is a measure of your general blood glucose control over three months. Mm. But that can be fine and you insulin resistant. We yeah. Don't, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, now, I mean, Medicare does allow fasting insulin okay. Uh, okay. here in Australia. So you don't, okay. you don't have to pay privately. Uh, oh, okay. Certainly not aware there's any restrictions on using it. Um, I use it probably like 20 times a day. So I hope there's no restrictions oh, really? on using it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, maybe not, maybe not, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe five or six. Um, <laughs> I, I expect I'll probably get audited at some point because of my <laughs> requesting, but yeah, um, but then you know, oh, pretty much everybody's instant resistance. So I'll go back and say, yes. well, look, yeah. you know, the, the result was positive, you know, like mm -hmm. 99% of people, this is this is a genuine, yes. know, useful test. So, yeah, um, so I want to backtrack a little bit if we can. Um, mm -hmm. just, just go back uh, earlier in the in, in the, the podcast, you mentioned that carbohydrates seemed to cause problems with your periods mm -hmm. with your pain yeah that's not something that people necessarily would attribute to carbohydrates <laughs> yes so the another problem is this is that when you find uh, a col or a correlation like that people would want to dismiss it because there's no randomized controlled trial mm. so i tend to tell people are you going to wait until someone does a randomized control trial for your specific symptom before you make a change? You can literally make a change for three months. And if there's no difference and you don't think it works, that's fine. You know, we're not trying to get you, we're not giving you any medication. We're not trying to do, get you to do anything crazy. It's to try just removing something for about three months and see the difference. Hmm. For me, um, from that first time when I had that ginger tea, I think I was in my late teens, I had always known that this was something that was, you know, causing me pain. Mm. Now, in between, I was still just having like a balanced diet, eating whatever I wanted. So what I started doing was like, you know, once I have my period for that two weeks after, I can eat whatever I wanted. But mm. like two weeks or a week and a half before my next period, I'll cut out the sugar. Right. So, um, so you know, my periods went from... You know, I used to have a bit of irregularity. I would never be able to tell when the next one's going to come. Mm. Um, so I never would mark it on the calendar. I was just like, I know I've got an alarm and the alarm is basically premenstrual cramps for two to three days before. Mm. That's how I know that my period is coming. Yeah. So that's what I used to rely on until I started taking out the sugar. Yeah. The premenstrual cramps stopped. Mm. So, so when, when, I, when you took out sugar, just I, the... Yes. The PMS, PMS tension, and all the rest of it just yeah. disappeared. The, I never used to get mood swings and things. It was just cramps, pain. Okay. So once I took out the sugar, the pain stopped. So oh, I would know oh. I'm getting my period on the day of the period. Yeah. Wow. Right. And then I would get cramps. I would get cramps. I'd be fine. Hmm. Sometimes I'd need to take a paracetamol, sometimes not, but it was hmm. never as bad. And then after a few years, that dropped off. And I remember hmm. after I became a doctor of course the stress yes. all the sugar you know and um i just didn't remember this thing that i had learned so i mean i one day i was having really bad cramps and i think i was about 25 26 and i was grumpy and my friend was like what do you want me to do and i said can you just go make me some milo right mm -hmm. some milo i don't know if you know milo you know yes. the chocolate yeah, drink, yeah. Chocolate I, drink yes. I loved it it's like reminds me of my childhood <laughs> i absolutely adored it so i have found it in some shop 
And I got it and I started drinking. And I remember this so well because she went to the kitchen to make me this Milo and I could hear the water boiling and her like mixing it in the cup. And then suddenly I heard her call my name and I was like, what is it? And she said, didn't you say sugar causes your period cramps? And I said, yes. And she's like, do you know the first ingredient in Milo is sugar? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just froze because I hadn't looked. Mm. To me, Milo is just chocolate. Yes. You know, and this is the thing with a lot of people. We assume things. Yes. I mean, I, I, a couple of uh, years later, I fell in love with these meatballs from Ikea. And I love them so much. And I'll get them all the time until I thought, you know what? Maybe let me see if I can actually make this at home. And I turned the back and looked at the ingredient. And the first ingredient was sugar in meatballs. Yeah. Yeah, it's in everything. So it's added to it's everything. in everything. Oh, it's shocking. Yeah. People don't, aren't aware. It's like, why would they do it? People just don't think. Yep. about it because it's not it's not a reasonable thing to do mm. to put sugar in stuff and everything yeah so people are sometimes assume it's just not yeah. um and you know that's something that we need to you know to, i need to talk to people about as well you know mm. you can't just assume if something is in a label there's going to be wheat in it there's going to be sugar in it they just put everything in it Absolutely. so the best thing to do is you know make it yourself go to the outside of the the, the supermarket mm. and just get the stuff that aren't in packages mm. um so yeah, that's it. And I, I became more and more aware. And with um, the carnival, carnival diet, the period now, it's like, is it even there? It's like on the dot. It's so right. regular now. There is like no pain. It's it's weird. It's yeah. weird that there's no pain. You know, like, <laughs> like you know, I haven't even. Going on? I don't know. For the for last few months, I don't even know where my paracetamol is. Like, yeah, it's amazing though. There's that's, that's... nothing. I mean, I'm obviously not getting periods. Um, <laughs> I can imagine they are not yes. super pleasant at times. No, uh, no. But to go from irregular, really painful, you know, cramps for days just mm -hmm. before and then during mm -hmm. to just, I don't even know where my painkillers are because I've not needed them in months. I mean, that's... that's... I refer to it. I refer to it now as a ghost period. Like, is it there? Is it not? I don't... Yeah. <laughs> wow. Because okay. it's just... So, so easy. And it's just on so the dot easy. and it's just so yeah. regular. And yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So someone will now tell me, oh, where is the randomized control torrent for that? I'm like, I need to see one. I'm not yeah. in any pain. I don't need any other proof. Exactly. Well, this is it, isn't it? People say, well, you know, that's just, that's just anecdote. It's just one person. I'm like, that's all I need. I just need to talk yeah. to one patient, me and my patient. Yeah. That's all but I you're, need. You're that one person. You're I'm that, that one person. person you know? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what happens to to Joe Bloggs down the road or mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever, Jane Doe. Mm -hmm. It's just no, mm -hmm. like this this is me, this happened to me, this is real, yeah. this is genuine. I don't need that yeah. randomized control trial to say, yeah. you know, this this works because it works. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. me. Um uh, you mentioned a few times that you you've obviously had some of your own health issues. Uh you mentioned a family history of type 2 diabetes. Do you know where you're at now as far as your risks for that? And has do you know if carnivore's made any difference at all for you there? Um, I've only had one blood test since carnivore, and that was like a month in. Um, mm. so I want to give it like you know a proper maybe even a year because I'm yeah. quite confident with it. Um, and I didn't my my I've never had any problems with my blood sugars yeah. um on on a blood test. Okay, so my fasting has always been perfect, HbA1c has always been perfect. That's not been a problem. Mm. I did used to have reactive hypoglycemia though when I was eating carbs. Mm. Like I would eat like a carby breakfast, mm. um, drive from Huntingdon to Cambridge. This is when I was in GP training. So that's like a, maybe a 25 minute drive. And by the time I got to the ward, I would be starving. Yeah. Like starving. Like I just hadn't eaten like just 15 minutes ago. Mm. Um, and it's basically what, uh, after a while I had to figure it out. And it's because once I put that carb load in, my body is hypersensitive to it. So it just shoots out all the insulin and it gets rid of it immediately. And then suddenly just my crashes. blood glucose levels crashes. I'm shaking, yeah, literal shaking, sweating. Mm. But I had my every time I have my blood um, glucose checked, it's fine. HbA one c yeah. is fine. Yeah. So that obviously doesn't happen in car in carnival. It does not. But yeah. even before I went low carb, I obviously I took out wheat first, and I started to realize all the things that wheat would do to me. Yeah. And it got to a point where if I was hungry, and the only thing that was available was a wheat sandwich, like a bread, you know, I would rather not eat than yeah. eat that. Mm. 
because I knew I would I would feel worse after eating that than yeah. if I was just hungry. Yeah. I mean, I was listening to, I think it was Dr. Sean Baker's podcast the other day, mm-hmm. the Rivera podcast. Mm-hmm. And I think, he, I think it was that when he had someone on there that said, nothing feels, nothing tastes better than, healthy. than, than how good it feels to be healthy yeah. along those yeah. lines I'm yeah. Probably, yeah 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 probably killing it yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nothing nothing tastes better than how good health feels yeah yeah like that I, that for me that was just like light bulb moment yeah like that, that just I, stuck with me yeah I think that's a that's a riff off of I think Kate Moss said it in the 90s she said um right. nothing tastes as good as skinny feels Right. But obviously she was keeping yeah. skinny. She was yes. keeping skinny by the cigarettes and other oh, things. Yes. Yeah. So this this guy, I think he said nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Yeah. 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 And that is that is perfect because yeah. that's exactly what it is. Absolutely. And when, that's, that's when you start to feel now. good. Exactly. Oh, yeah. When you start to feel good, mm. you, you you just don't want the things that are gonna make you feel bad. Absolutely. I mean, I, I was yeah. at dinner with friends last week. Um, it was like a Chinese restaurant and I'm not so strict where I, you know, something has condiments. I'll eat stuff with condiments on. I don't mind, but mm-hmm. it's just going to be the meat. So they know now and then they're like, oh, she's just eating meat. So put all the meat over there and stuff. <laughs> and they're all making fun of me and things. And, um, oh, do you want dessert? I'm like, no, no, not dessert. I used to be dessert queen. There was always space for yeah. dessert. Oh, yeah. Chocolate fudge cake and vanilla ice cream. That oh, was yes. me. <laughs> Every time. Absolutely. But now it's like, I don't, I don't remember. And I, yeah. I, when I started low carb, I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to eat this. I don't remember. And yeah. they all had like banana fritters and deep fried ice cream. Suresh is a mm. thing mm. called deep fried ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was looking at them it's and they the were like, oh my God, this is yeah. so nice. And I just thought, is I it? Cannot, is I it can really? feel, I yeah. can feel this. I can yeah. feel how horrible this will be in my yeah. body. Yeah. No interest yeah. in it whatsoever. No, isn't that funny? When you when you go carnival, you kind of just most people just lose interest in that unhealthy food. You know, yes. I I said it. I mean, like I've had a lot of struggles myself. You know, first mm-hmm. few episodes on this podcast, I was talking about mm-hmm. my personal journey. You know, mm-hmm. I was very overweight for a long time. I've yo-yo dieted all, all the way, you know, kind of through my life. I was massive sweet tooth at times, even though I always preferred savory. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd always rather pick like say cheese over sugar when I had that sugar, like you said, the cookie, it wasn't, wasn't one bite. It, it was, it was, it was the whole jar. <laughs> and then it was like, right, I'm going to, I'm going to make some more cookies and go yeah, buy some yeah. cookies and just, yeah. eat, just yeah. eat more. That you can't, you, know? you literally no. can't. Oh, that reminded me of something. Yeah. That just literally reminded me of something. Go ahead. I'll, 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 okay, I'll okay. remember. Um, and, uh, and, and now, you know, like, I'm just like. I walk into like the staff room at work, whatever, and there's chocolate there. Like, you know, patients, like they bring you chocolates and stuff. You mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And I think we're always grateful. We don't throw them away, whatever, you know, someone, someone will eat them. And I just, I just walk by them. I'm like, no, nah. yeah. literally like, it's like just, food. it's like, it's, it's not food. Yeah. It's not nutrition no. for me. It's not food. Yeah. It's just yeah. going to make me feel bad. Yeah. I don't want to feel the bad. the point? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to feel bad. Like, no, I don't want to eat it. It's like, do and I want to sleep well tonight or not? Yeah. Do I want to? Uh, and it's just yeah. like that. I just, I just, there's just no part of me that wants that anymore. Like yeah. just, just like literally like a shield, like just, no, it's not even, I'm not even contemplating it's, it. Like it's crazy. It's just so good that you mentioned this because I I'd have forgotten about this. When I was eating a balanced diet <laughs> or a vegetarian <laughs> balance. diet, I always, I always go on balanced yeah. diet. Right. Yeah. Um, and you have cravings, right? Yeah. And people say, oh, you know, when you get your craving, you just need to distract yourself. You know, go uh, read a book or go for a walk or Mm. exercise or whatever. Mm. When I was in that stage, it was like I had four brains, right? Four different levels of my mind. And apart from the conscious one that was doing whatever activity I was doing then, the remaining three were thinking about the food that I wanted to eat. So, Mm. for example, if I had for some some in some way, got on willpower enough to eat only four of the seven cookies or whatever, and there's three left, yeah. right? My mind would just be, there's three left, there's three left, there's three left, the whole time, even as I'm doing yoga, mm. even yeah. as I'm watching a very Same. interesting TV show or whatever, Same. even as I'm going for a walk, it's still at the back of my mind, Yeah, right? It's still there, and it will not shut up. Even if I say, okay, you know what, I'm just going to sleep. I'm lying down and it's still Thinking. there. Yep. I get up, I go and eat it, it switches off. Yeah. 
there is nothing that you can so I understand when people say, oh, you know, you know, I, I you know I cheated, I didn't. Because if the addiction is still there, you can you can't mm. distract from it. You can't distract. Yeah. And the people that keep telling you that you can just do this or that, they haven't experienced that. They yeah. don't know what it is. Or because I know what it is. Lying. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's also i never think about uh, that possibility <laughs> people lie people lie i, know, I don't know I maybe know, maybe, do. maybe not maybe i not. do i do but yeah. but you know i never think of that possibility for some reason yeah. but i understand <laughs> that because the minute when i am on carnivore very low carb yeah that doesn't happen um yeah. i went traveling and i bought some biscuits in june july last year this was like you know the shortbread you know mm. like um mm. yeah they're still in my cupboard yeah. yeah like i would go open it and take my chili peppers or whatever i want to get from the cupboard i'm like oh yeah these are still here and i close the cupboard door yeah it's just <laughs> and i out. don't yeah. remember term i don't yeah. remember it until i open the cupboard door again to get something yeah. else no exactly right we've, we've got some like chocolate fritos or something yeah. in, the, in the fridge yeah. and and they're still there like they're too high the kids can't get them uh yeah. and they're still there <laughs> like i would have like four months ago i would have I just polished them off like just like immediately just, like just immediately. Got, yeah like yeah. oh they're there oh, yeah. I must I must eat them I must eat them I can't go to sleep until yeah. I eat them yeah like they're just there like you know <laughs> and and I I used to um it, it's embarrassing really to talk about it but I used to just be so addicted to sugar at times like I wouldn't even or just addicted to eating and then addicted to sugar mm -hmm. and I would you know I'd eat dinner and then like my stomach just I wouldn't be full to bursting so for me that was okay I need to eat more because I'm I'm not full mm. that was that was like I'm hungry but yeah. I'm actually hungry I just wasn't full to bursting yes so I would I would go and eat like a bowl of, of cereal but I would I would put sugar on it mm. and it was like sugary cereal and I'd put sugar mm. on it and then I'd eat it yeah. and then I'd feel really full yeah but because it was sugar I just I wanted more so I'd get another one yeah yeah. And it was like, I've probably eaten like a thousand calories of just almost yeah. pure sugar. Just snack. Yeah. When I didn't even want it. And you're so, not even hungry. You're not no. hungry. It's, what I wasn't is even that? hungry. Is there, a, yeah. is there a name for that? Because I know that. I know exactly yeah, I what mean, you're saying. It's just, it. just food addiction and just. Well, I mean, well. I but there's a psychological, that, there's a psychological and a, a, a physiological, you know, process. I think there, like when, when your insulin's super high, which mine, mine was, um, you know, my, my theory anyway, this is not necessarily proven, but you know, it just, it, it drives down your sugar levels and then your, mm -hmm. your body is, and you get this reactive hypoglycemia and then your mm -hmm. body's, your body's low. And then, so you're searching mm -hmm. for more sugar to, to bring it yeah. back up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the sugar, the sugar gives you the dopamine hit, you know, it's, it's a drug. It's a drug. Yeah. Like this it is, is a I, was, I, I was addicted. There's, there's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. You know? I mean, that particular thing is one of the side effects that I get from wheat as well. Mm. Appetite stimulation. Mm. Where I eat it. So when I eat wheat, there's like one of five things that happen, yeah. five or six things. It's either tummy pain or severe indigestion, body aches, like you know, like fibromyalgia where you press anywhere and it yeah. hurts. Yeah. I always I refer to it like I've been in a battle with an elephant, like everywhere it just hurts. Wow, yeah. Um, it triggers my asthma. Mm. Um, and then it does the appetite stimulation and i don't know it has until yeah. i'm standing in front of my fridge at 10 p.m yeah. full to yeah. bursting yeah. and still looking for some more food absolutely to and that was exactly the same with me you know i was my my weakness was always bread and i would like like we we I it was probably <laughs> simultaneously the best thing and the worst thing we ever did was was buy a bread maker and oh. it was like it was game changing for us because we we could stop buying bread from the supermarket and it's so mm. nice like i, I do mm. kind of miss bread if yeah i miss it's probably fresh fresh homemade bread yeah but i would like we would bake a loaf and then like i would just be like cutting slices off like every 10 minutes like and it, it would just mm -hmm. be gone and then my yeah. wife would be like oh let's make some sandwiches for the kids for tomorrow i'm like yeah i'll be in it all <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like what what like what the fuck like excuse my language like what the hell is going on i'm like sorry like i just ate it all it's just like i don't you know. know what happened <laughs> i don't know i don't know it was, it was a dog like you know we haven't got a dog but you know um and it was kind of just like yeah like i was and, and that's what we did for me I, just, totally I couldn't i couldn't stop, stop eating it yeah. yeah yeah it made me bloated and it made me yeah. feel unwell yeah i just couldn't stop eating it but but yeah. now like now the smell of fresh bread i like it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, still, we still cook some for the mm -hmm. kids for sandwiches mm -hmm. and stuff sometimes but 
I I just like yeah, it's a nice smell. That that's yeah. it now. I don't. Yeah, I don't that's me walking. See? Yeah, walking past the bakery, I'm like, oh, that yeah. smells really nice. As I'm yeah. walking past, like, I can just. I don't have to get anything from there. Yeah. I can acknowledge it's a good smell. Okay. I refer to weed as the devil. It's the devil. It's very yeah. tantalizing. It tastes very oh, yeah. nice. I still miss stuff, but yeah. at this point, it's like do I want to feel bad? The answer is no. So I'm not eating it. That's absolutely. It. Exactly. Right. I mean, nothing, nothing tastes as good as healthy. As feels, good as healthy right? feels. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, so speaking of kids, you've got, you've got a child. How many, how many kids have you got? Just no, one? no, no. I haven't got any kids. <laughs> Oh, I thought I thought I you said your your son your no, son no. had eczema. No, oh okay, I must have missed that. Oh no 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 no, my patient son. It was my patient. Oh, son. oh sorry sorry. Okay, Who had okay. advised? Yeah, I'd advised, okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask how you deal with kids at home with carnival, but mm. obviously we won't talk uh, about that. Then no, that's no, fine. No. So, yeah. um, how how do your friends kind of take it? Because you mentioned a couple of times going out with your friends and they kind mm -hmm. of be making fun of you a little bit. Yeah yeah yeah. What's their take I mean, on carnival? Uh, <laughs> I find it very frustrating. I find it very frustrating. And okay. because it's like they, you know, they don't think I'm silly or stupid. Like I don't know what I'm doing, but they think that the benefits are just for me, you know, and it, it won't do anything for them, mm. you know? So okay. even though I don't have like the back pain they have or the, or the, you know, insomnia that they have or mm. the random headaches that they have, I don't have any of that. But they just think, oh, that's just you. You just don't have that. I just have it. Yeah. I'm like, you don't just have, you're not born with all these things. This yeah. is what I'm saying about yeah. trying to get people to understand that what they eat, things they eat are not benign. Mm. There are things that you're doing that are causing this. Yeah. Um, so I had a friend tell me yesterday, oh, you know, um, don't eat this kind of thing or you'll get ill. I'm like, it's fine. I don't eat that kind of stuff, you know. And all, I think she was saying about, about me and I'm like, it's fine. You know, I don't, I'm not going to get ill with that. And she's like, oh, no, it's because it's you're strong. And I said, no, it's because I eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't get ill. Yeah. You know, that's it. It's, they, try, they try to basically separate the benefits you're getting from meat from actually being yeah. from meat. Yeah. They just try to say, oh, they're just, you're just healthy or you're just strong it's, it's crazy isn't it they do they, they try they kind of say oh well that's that's just a one-off that's just you yes. you're you're just yeah. different like yeah. you don't have my issues and it's kind of like yeah trying to get people to think well you weren't born with these issues like it's it's not normal exactly. human experience to just exactly have, to just be ill or to be Ill sorts of thing. and have yeah. chronic pain and so on but they yeah. they I don't know whether that's satiety's problem like we we do normalize just ill health we normalize you know um, oh, I'm just getting mm -hmm. older. I'm just getting getting yes. fatter. Whatever. You have like 35 year olds saying that. Oh, I, my energy is just low now, but you know, I'm getting old, and they're like yeah. 38 or something. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. What we I, don't I'd refer run, to yeah. old people, elderly people, until you're over 65. Now it's over yeah. 70. Yeah. So what's a 38 year old person talking about getting old? For? Exactly. I had a 31 but, year old today in clinic. They came yeah, in. You yeah. know, oh, I'm feeling fatigued and tired and sore. Oh, I guess I guess I'm just getting old. It's like you're 31. <laughs> like like. I really know. Like, i know the fact you, you even consider yourself old at so old is, because they feel it though insane. they feel it because their bodies are starting to ache and they, so they feel old i'm like it's, it's not because yeah. you're old it's because your yeah. body is getting more and more fed up absolutely dealing with the stuff that you're putting in it absolutely it's just it's, it's insane to me that people will will just ascribe to just feeling old and so on and they just they can't see that it's it's the it's not even that it's the food that's causing it but that it's just not normal. It's not normal. You know, yeah. Once once you accept you have to that figure it's, it out. Yeah. it's not normal, then, then you, you can, can start, start to, to look. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But they just mm -hmm. they can't, they can't, they just this yeah. is just so normal for them. That's why I need to be on the roof with a megaphone. Yeah. What, like literally, I just want to just <laughs> they just wanted to get in there, just in a tiny little seed in everyone's mind so yeah. that they can start to look. That's Absolutely. all I ask. It's it's crazy, isn't it? Where are you going to go from here then with your diet? Are you going to stay on carnivore? Are you? Are you? You said you occasionally eat other things as well. I yeah. Mean, what's what's so, your plan moving forwards? So I think it'll be mainly carnivore because it's the simplest, it's the easiest. I feel so good on it. But just for maybe variety, I'm I'm trying to see what other things I can add in that don't take me away from how well I feel. Mm. So, for example, I make bone broth, which is great. That's part of carnival as well. But yeah. I, you know, I said to you, I use condiments. I put my spices and stuff. Mm. Um, and then I'm, 
um, sometimes I'll put some dried herb and um, dried leaves in there because that's the traditional Nigerian thing that I, so I have some with me. So I'll put it there and actually see over the next few days, if anything happens, if nothing happens, you know, I get, take that as an okay sign. Mm. Um, you know, I might try some of the stuff like the tubers that I used to have when I was paleo. I was also fine with them at that time. I don't know how things have changed because it's been 10 years, mm. but yams are traditional Nigerian food as well. So I might try that, but it was literally going to be from time to like a one, maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks or something. Yeah. But the baseline is just basically going to be meat yeah. and eggs and my um, full fat Greek yogurt. Mm. Sometimes I put like a date in the yogurt, um, okay. but it's literally yeah. one day or yeah. in the in the yeah. So yeah, that's that's how I'm going to keep it because I can't imagine bringing all this stuff back because I know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, I just can't imagine straying too far. Yeah, I, I, I think, it, and everyone, you know, you go onto these internet forums and so on. Everyone's got their opinion on what carnivore should be, and mm. you know, and some people they go they really really pure. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. kind of pure carnivore at the moment. Mm-hmm. Others they they do more of what was like a keto, and they're still calling it carnivore. Everyone's got their own take mm-hmm. on it, but mm-hmm. I, I there's think a it, ketovore, yeah, there's a ketovore, absolutely. I think it's really mm-hmm. important to find your own rhythm. Yes, yes. with this diet with this way mm-hmm. of eating people call it mm-hmm. uh find out what works for for you and then of course to patients out there you know listening um that that's what i try and get my patients to do is 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 start from the start from scratch you know go to not necessarily a lion diet but just go go back to basics and the then elimination take everything absolutely. out and start from the basics, and then yeah. work out what's going on because I, I certainly yes. think that when you do that you become a lot more sensitive to those changes you and know you, you yeah. know straight away like yeah instantly. yeah no this did not make me feel good yeah, yeah exactly. it's gone you know? the thing is that you know what it feels like to feel good absolutely that's your baseline that's the baseline and if you detract yes. from that no then you know yeah absolutely yeah. that's a great way of putting it um we're running out of time a little bit again. I'm mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. conscious that we've been about an hour and a half now, I think probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's maybe a good time to perhaps perhaps wrap it up. Um, how, how can people get a hold of you? Okay, so um, you can find me on my website, Adore Health Coach. So Adore as in adorable. <laughs> A-D-O-R-E healthcoach.com yeah. um you can send me an email at adorehealthcoach at gmail.com as well i'm also on instagram the same adore health coach um i don't really post that much there but i might start to again mm-hmm. but yeah you can just send me an email shoot me an email you can go on my website and book an appointment i'm i'm giving away some free 30 minutes um initial appointments at the moment so you know you can just have a chat to me and actually see you know you know where we can go with you so I can yeah. reach people anywhere mm. but yeah so online is definitely where it is what I'm based in about to rack yeah yes. okay yeah. so at adore health coach on Instagram yeah. Uh, yeah. adorehealthcoach.com or is it dot com mm-hmm. au dot com dot com um mm-hmm. so anyone out there that's interested in, in getting a carnivore health coach please go and check out adori on mm-hmm. adorehealthcoach.com or at adore health coach on instagram uh if you've enjoyed this podcast guys please make sure you follow myself also on social media at dr suresh kawadka on instagram at s kawadka on twitter and facebook as well um share the podcast like subscribe etc etc if you found it useful uh, thank you so much for coming on today, Adore. Thank it's you, been Suresh. It's absolute been great. pleasure <laughs> talking to you and just having this chat. It's been great. We managed to work out all those issues, uh, so <laughs> which we had at the start. So, uh, but no, it's been it's been really good fun talking to you. It's so nice to just talk to like minded people uh, and just just to just to kind of chat, shoot the breeze, and just kind of get other people's take on it uh all okay. the best success with your with your health coaching it's really thank exciting. you very much thank you very I hope much it goes I'm, very well for you i'm really looking forward to where it's going to go so thank you for having me on yeah, absolutely well i'd love to catch up maybe in a few months time see how it's yeah. going and uh, so definitely keep in touch and we can we can do some more down the line excellent well all you right. take care <laughs> and you too thanks very much have a good evening bye 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 bye